how is it that you still uh, feel that? Like, how is it possible that after getting rid of all that religious shame and knowing that it doesn't make any sense, how is it possible that it's still affecting you? Especially, especially like a year before you go, when you were not Catholic, right? When you were completely, you know, you know that this, you knew that these ideas are stupid and make no sense, right? You knew that shaming was un unjustified, right? But even with that knowledge, you still felt shame and you still felt mm, hatred towards yourself. Is that fair mm -hmm. to say? For having these f uh, feelings. How is that possible? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It just is. Like, it's not rational. It's not rational. Um, it's not... You know, it's just what I've internalized throughout my entire life. Made to... Um, what I've been holding within myself since I was like seven or eight years old. Um, oh, should I read this comment? Um, Afshin is saying, I get it. I still feel guilty sometimes because I had gay sex 17 years ago. I have to remind myself that it's remnants of Islamic brainwashing quite often. It's true. Um, so like, how is it possible? Like rationally, I... Um, I, and that's the thing, even a year ago when I was having a full blown breakdown, <laughs> um, I, I knew it wasn't rational. I've been able to recognize it as irrational for years, for years, but I still feel that way. I just do. And so I just have to challenge myself, you know, I have to, um, be in relationship with people who challenge me to question that um people who help me appropriately label it as what it is um i have an amazing therapist i highly suggest therapy to everyone <laughs> um specifically a therapist that has a background in cognitive behavioral therapy it's extremely important evidence-based um and um yeah, my therapist has the funniest advice. I love her. I love her so much. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if I can say what she, <laughs> what advice she gives me on air. <laughs> Wait, can can you like you can't because of what? Because of uh, YouTube restrictions? Um, or because of not YouTube restrictions. Um. <laughs> just it might shock people <laughs> let them be shocked it's fine if that's your only concern it's fine go on um oh my god no so in, in, in this past year it literally got to the point where my therapist mandated that i go date people she's like Susanna, this is your homework you, like this is non-negotiable like you're not going to work through these problems you have unless you go practice so what's that shocking advice that wasn't shocking well, I mean, following that, she said, don't call me back until you've been penetrated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like her. I like her. She's, She's so good. funny. She's a Christian. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, and, Wait. Uh, <laughs> so people are probably like, Oh my god, that's so inappropriate for your therapist to say blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, and I was talking, I had a session with her like yesterday, um, and I was reminded her of that, and she's like, Yeah, afterwards I was like, Oof, don't report me to the board. <laughs> and I was like, because no, she's I've literally been seeing her on and off since I was 15. Um, she's the most nurturing um figure in my life. I she's my role model. I model herself myself after her literally since I was an adolescent. So she knows me like better than um, most people in my life. Um, which brings me to my point of um, <laughs> if I'm ever mean to Armin on stream, <laughs> it's because I am mad at him 
<laughs> that he's gotten secrets out of me that not even my therapist of 10 years knows. <laughs> or I'm mad at myself for letting myself tell him. <laughs> yeah, I d I've never pressured you. No. Did I? No. no. I always make it clear. It. I'm mad at myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm acting out. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's okay. Um, I mean, yeah, she she has she's giving me other advice, which is really good too. Hmm. Um, I it was it was very interesting how when you were reading that note, how Catholic theme, like you wrote that as an ex-Catholic, and cat it, it was very Catholic, screaming off the page. Yeah, I remember leaving Islam when I left Islam, like having to deal with all of that guilt and shame and m the version of the shame I was dealing with as an ex-Muslim anti-Islam atheist, even though with all of that, like I was very aggressively anti-Islam. I knew it was like, this is obviously crazy. All of it is crazy. And yet the theme of my guilt towards the feeling I had sometimes. Again, I felt that much less than you based on what I know about you. Like, like I managed to like get rid of it quite fast, but even the amount, even what it was left, it had an Islamic theme to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I could feel the Islam, the Islamic guilt um, for a couple of years after. Um, after I left Islam, I, I still, I still sometimes doubt. Like, is this discuss? Is this should I be ashamed of this? Like sometimes, it, sometimes it comes back a little bit, right? Um, but then, I know how unreasonable it is because every time I feel it coming back, the shame, I taste Islam in my mouth somehow. You know what I mean? I know mm. this is. I can. It just. I smell mm. Islam, right? It's not just the shame of, of shame itself. Like that religious theme and the Islamic tone comes with it. So I know this is nonsense because it's Islam. You know what I mean? So that that helps me recognize how unreasonable this is because, because it comes with an Islamic flavor every time I, rem I, I get reminded of it. You know what's funny? What? When you were saying that, I was tasting the Eucharist and the wine in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, I think the reason why it's so Catholic, it's because that's just my frame of reference, right? Hmm. That's my frame of reference. That's the structure I've known. That's the script. That's the script that I was given. Mm -hmm. um, that's the language that I have. Um, it's the visual the visual iconography, the visual language that I have. I mean, I have Catholicism tattooed on me. Like, <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, you can't see it very well. Shoot. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a sacred heart. It's one mm. of the things. Um, I have other Catholic stuff I want to get tattooed on me too, still. Still, you want them on tattooed yeah. on you? I'm obsessed mm. with Catholic art. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like me I said, too. it's everything I've ever known. Mm. Um, yeah. Did the when you were part of Antifa and all of that, did they not at least help you with getting because they're at least I mean as 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 nonsensical their claim their views are, at least they're not into sex shaming. Right? Um well I mean it's not exactly a appropriately labeled as Antifa, I would um, more file it under my critical diversity studies days. So I actually received honors for my writing in critical gender and sexuality studies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. Yeah, like I was awarded for exemplary writing for my entire senior class, my graduated oh. class. And it's people, you don't know what you're talking about, girl! <laughs> <laughs> My professors told me that this was better than the stuff that their like graduate students wrote. Okay, um, wow. so, um, so it was more influenced by that, right? Critical theory. Mm. Um, uh, the response to that was just to deconstruct everything, right? Mm. My response to that was to um, 
uh, partially as a way of um, trying to deny the existence of my sexual shame, I um, ran away from my existence as an attractive woman itself. So that's when I started to identify as genderqueer and trans um, for a while. And um, I dressed very differently. I dressed um, very masculinely. Um, I dressed primarily in extremely baggy clothing Good. to completely hide my the shape of my body, completely hide how I looked um, to yeah, completely um, uh, I think it was it was a fearful thing. It was a protective thing. I didn't want that attention. I was scared of that attention deeply. So were you scared of enjoying that attention? Yes. Hmm. So you were hiding whatever made you sexy as a way to not get the attention that you were afraid of enjoying. Because mm -hmm. that, that is disgusting and shameful. So is it fair to say that you were not trans you were there were it was not gender dysphoria that you were feeling you were using gender dysphoria as an excuse to hide your sexuality yes hmm. wow that's some deep stuff <laughs> right I, got a, I got a twisted psyche <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what religion does to you right? yeah no that's how hmm. deep it went it went hmm. so deep I was so ashamed of my sexuality and desire as a woman. I didn't believe I was a woman. Like, How did... bro. bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> so if somebody complimented you back then and considered you to be sexy, how would that make you feel? Like you would like it and you hate yourself for liking it? Um, unless it was very specific people that i was interested in yeah mm. and how do you deal with that now if somebody compliments you and thinks that you're sexy i recognize it as objectively true <laughs> <laughs> round of applause <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was talking to my therapist about the other day about how much, mm. how far I've come in that mm. and realizing um, how uh, I'm incredible. Like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> and um, it's so funny because when I talk, <laughs> thank you, Fatima. <laughs> um, when I talk to people about it in my sexual shame, they, they think it comes from a place of insecurity. They're like, Susanna, were you talking about you're beautiful, you're cute, you're sexy, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I know I'm cute and sexy. I'm I'm not just cute and sexy. I'm intoxicating, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then I said that to my therapist, and she's like, no, Susanna, you're devastating. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So things are looking up. I've made a lot of progress. And I hope this, this helps other people recognize that like you don't this you don't have to be stuck in this. You don't have right. to be stuck in this. I'm I sometimes have thank you. Um mm -hmm. I sometimes have days where I have like a little mini shame spiral. Like I had a shame spiral about two weeks mm. two weeks ago and Armin was very kind and he talked me through it and it helped me so much. Um, mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, one thing that you mentioned is how jealous you are of people that never had to deal with religion. Uh, yes. People have no idea. Right. No idea. This is a comment that I think highlights that. Uh, Tijuana M says, or Tijuana, Tijuana. <laughs> Tijuana. Um, uh, I am very thankful that I grew up in a non-religious, non-religious and an irreligious household. You two are so incredibly strong. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. I was expressing this to you the other day. Hmm. I was like, I cannot conceptualize not carrying this burden. Like people who grew up without this are so, so lucky. I, hmm. 
at the same time, I wouldn't be who I am though. Right. Mm. Um, I, but the idea of not carrying this, not having this, that stunted me to use my therapist's words. Um, it, it's, it, it's almost, it's, it, it's inconceivable to me. Uh, hmm. So like one of my relationships right now really does help me challenge me to grow far beyond how I was stunted. And it's amazing. Um, yeah. To, I sometimes imagine if it's possible to live in a world where the desire for sex is as shameful or looked down upon as our yeah. desire for food. Yeah, you know this, right? And I always like imagine a scenario where like in an alternative universe where people were so open about what they're into sexually and they were not hiding it and it wasn't something private. But if you were eating food publicly, people were like, Oh my God, like hide that. Like how could their children hear like they could be what you're eating. Like this is disgusting. And if you see a movie where people are enjoying a steak, then it would be like R rated. Like that desire would be discussed considered um, shameful and something to be kept private and it has to be only enjoyed in certain ways and there are right ways of doing it and wrong ways of doing it. Right. And I, and I always wonder like, what's the difference between that desire and this desire? Like it, they're just desires. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why is one of them is being seen as taboo and the other one not. I mean, the only thing that I can, should be concerned with, with in both is with how to do it healthy and how to do it in a way that doesn't damage your body. That's mm -hmm. the only concern that we should have with both of them, right? And when it comes to like, you know, you know, not for example, giving, you know, not eating too much sugary stuff, right? Like not about, there's nothing shameful. Yeah, so that's, that's the only thing that we should be concerned about. What is gonna damage you? And what's not going to damage you? Anything else is irrelevant. 